gentle people and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. In this video I will be creating the fancy chess pieces that match this particular board. This is a custom order, a chess set with a beach theme. So this board does have a spiral and abalone shells in it and so we're going to be making the matching chess pieces. And so to get started, we of course need our silicone molds. Uh, I have two sets because I will do one set in one color, one set in a second color. In addition to the molds, of course, we always need our resin. And if you've watched my videos, you know my go-to resin is the Craft Smart. That's the Part A resin. That is the Part B hardener. And if you're working with resin, you need to be able to measure it, so we'll need the large measuring cup. We will need a smaller measuring cup. I am going to be using three colors of resin, so I need three cups. Two there, and a little one there. And of course we need stir sticks. And in the big measuring cup, I'm actually going to stir with a spatula. We need our nitro gloves and then the mica powders that we are going to be using for this project are the All Starry, I need that to focus, the All Starry Macaw Blue, the Nodway Chameleon Blue Cyan, Chameleon means it sort of changes colors, but Blue Cyan. So that's for the water. And for the sand, we're going to be using Bling It. Let's spin that. Interference Gold. And we will be adding some of my Daytona Beach sand that I actually got off the beach. And I keep in that container. We will need the flat. The, I'm almost out of them the flat abalone shells a couple of spiral shells and because the customer said red is the preferred color I'm also going to be adding a couple of slithers of red abalone shells when I finish the pieces, I will cover the bottom of each one in felt. So I have a brown and a teal felt right here. And to attach the foam to the bottom, I'm using Aileen's Felt and Foam Tacky Glue. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, I know what it is. <clears throat> I watched a YouTube video produced by a company called Crafted Elements and they make industrial size, industrial grade silicon molds. One of the things that the person in the video said is that they always spray their molds with MG Chemicals epoxy mold release. Now what a mold release does is just makes it um, prevents your resin from actually sticking to the silicone mold. So rather than use the MG Chemicals mold release I will be using a Pell mold release. I yeah, found it on Amazon. It's quite a bit cheaper. And I think that's everything now. Hear what? When I taped my materials list, and finished. I turned the camera off so that I didn't waste video of me putting stuff away. Um, however, I forgot to turn the camera back on once I started. So I am not going to redo what I did as step one, but I am going to show you. I'm going to simulate it. So basically, 
what we're looking at is we want to make these chest pieces. So we want to have the top be different from the bottom. And so the way to achieve that is to put a separator in each one of these. And so what I did that you did not see is I just stuck a straw in there. I clipped it like that. Stuck the straw, stuck the straw in there. Clipped it like that. That's the one that gave me trouble. You'll see that in the video. Clip it like that. So I did that for, for just the royalty pieces, not for any of the pawns, just the royalty pieces. So put your straw in, push it all the way down, as tight to the bottom as you can get it, and as tight in there as you can. And so, let me move that. And so then the next thing I did was, <clears throat> okay, I left off a step. Mold release. You need to make sure that you spray your mold with mold release before you do the straws. So spray this with the mold release, put the straws in, cut them, then You mix your resin, your part A and your part B. After it's mixed, you pour it into the tops, just the tops. You're only pouring one quarter of an inch into each of those tops. And then you want to add your shells, sprinkle your shells inside each of the tops. So I have the flat, abalone shells and then I have <clears throat> an assortment of spiral shells and because the customer said that the favorite color she's giving this as a gift that the favorite color was red I also have these red, <clears throat> these red abalone shells. So I put one red shell in each king and in each queen. Once I added the shells, I then poured the rest of the clear resin into these tops. Now you will see in the video where this one in particular, for some reason, this is like really, this is loose. And the resin that was here flowed underneath this. But if you push these in right where they're supposed to be and you push them down tight, then the resin will stay on this side and not flow to the other side. And so that's how I did the initial um, setup that you did not see me do because I did it and I hadn't turned on the camera. So that's what that looks like. <clears throat> that's what that looks like. And you're going to pour clear resin with your seashells on this side, and then you're going to pour your colored resin at the bottom. So the sandy colored resin went here, and the ocean blue water went there. And I think that's um, about the best way to simulate the piece that uh, I forgot the videotape. And since I'm now doing this after the fact, I can then show you what the final product actually looks like. That's the water and that's, and that's the sand. So you can see how you have a nice, oops, let's turn it the right way, because that way you can see the red. So both have seashells. This has the sand on the front, that's really pretty. And then the iridescent. I added glitter, you can see the glitter there. So this is what we're working with. This was what the goal was, to have these pieces match that chessboard. Okay, I think that's that's it. That makes up for what I didn't videotape. Okay, so you can see 
that these are still full. No leakage there. No leakage there. This one has bent some. So now it's time to mix more resin so that we can do the colors. So again, this is going to be another 200 to do these two. So you can't really see this, I don't think, but I'm going to go ahead and mix this anyway. Okay, so now we want to mix our colors. So I'm going to pour just a little bit in here for the cyan. Actually, you know what? Let me top these off. This darn thing just does not want to cooperate with me. Okay, so to the first cup, I am going to add the Interference Gold, the Interference Gold, the Bling It Interference Gold. And to this, we are going to add the beach sand. I, all, I put it in a cup to make it easy so I didn't just spill all of that. I didn't have this in my materials, but I'm going to add some gold glitter to this. Okay, and now I'm going to pour this into these molds. So again, this is interference gold with some sand and some glitter mixed in. A 
we'll let that set for a minute. To this, we're going to add the, so we're going to add the blue cyan to this little bit. And here's where the sparkle comes in on this, on the blue. And then we're going to add the macaw blue. I see already I'm going to have to mix some more resin because when I topped those off, I used up a lot of what was supposed to go in this container. A little bit of this in the bottom of each one of these. It's funny, some of these have no leakage and some of these have a lot of leakage. So I'm going to have to mix more resin. So now we're just going to pull And I can take any remaining. That's running. Well, we can't do anything about that. Okay, so now we need to heat down to pop these air bubbles. This darn piece has just given me all kinds of problems. Okay, so now I need to mix the resin for the pawns. Okay, so the molds for the ponds require 120 milliliters. So, 120 twice is 240. And so we're just going to mix that again. Part B.
and then part A. Okay, so now we're going to mix the resin for the pawns. Again, our macaw blue. going to finish these off. Which means I'm going to have to mix some more blue resin. Let's do the bling it. And again, some glitter. some sand. Before I add resin to these, I'm going to spray the molds with the Ipel Mold Release. I just don't want that spray getting on the lens of my camera. And so for these, You have to continue to stir this so all the sand doesn't settle to the bottom.
Okay, before I pour my blue, I need to get the straws out of. Ooh! spilled some of the blue moving this. Ah. Okay, now we can add blue here.
Okay, so I'm finished the pour, and now I'm just gonna run the heat gun over these. All right, it is the next day, so we are going to unmold these and see how they turned out. All right, let's start with these. Very nice. The boo pour was much cleaner than the sand pour. I mean, even the mold is cleaner. The overflow that has to be trimmed off. But that's what we were going for. <clears throat> Where the straw came out of this one, it left a hole right there. So I'm going to have to fill that. But which one of these? One of these, this one is the one that I have to go back and fix. So I'm going to stand that one up. Okay, now to the other side. So you can see on here that all the sand actually sank because this goes in the mold this way. All the sand actually sank to the bottom. But when you're looking at it, again, the ivory and the sand. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, these need to be cleaned up. That's kind of, that really is kind of a nice effect to have that sand going down the side. And for the royalty, let's get these out of here. Oh, 
came out nice. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Nice and clean. Well, these, I don't know if I sprayed more silicone in this mold or not, but these are coming out rather easily. There are all the pieces. So now we're going to just take our um, cuticle cutters and we're going to cut what we trim off, what we can trim with the cutters, cuticle cutters, and then we'll use and then we'll use the deburring tool to clean any edges. Okay, so the last thing we need to do to finish these is to glue felt to the bottom of each piece. Off camera, I sat and I cut these, so now I'm just going to glue these onto the bottom. And I am using, what is this called? Aileen's Felt and Foam Tacky Glue. You obviously can use uh, Elmer's glue, any kind of glue that will dry clear. Um, but when you use this, once it dries, it doesn't make the bottom feel hard. It still feels like felt, so that's why this is a good choice. And so we are just going to get the glue to come out of the container.
I am gluing these and then I'll come back in about uh, half hour and then I'll just trim from around here. One of the things I found is if I started trimming while the glue was still wet, my felt sort of slid and it shifted out of place. So now I know just glue it, let it set, and then come back and trim. So if you're looking at it and saying, boy, those are sticking off, she didn't trim them, that's because I do that last. Now to go back and just trim these. Let me get an angle so you can see. But right, that's that's a hole right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape both sides. I'm sanding that out with the Dremel. I'm going to sand that out, and then I'm going to tape both sides, and I'm going to pour another coat of resin on this. Now you can see where I sanded um, that spot. So what I'm going to do is just put tape on both sides. Tape that nice and tight. Then I'm going to pour, mix 10 milliliters of resin and then fill that hole. And when I do that, I'm actually not just filling the hole, I'm going to run the resin all the way down the edge so it levels. Okay, so I sanded that out, so that's a close-up. And we're going to fill that with resin. Then I noticed that this one, let me see, yeah, was not even. So that needs a little touch-up. So that's nice and smooth. And this one has just a little dent right in the middle. So I mixed resin for another project because I only needed a couple of drops for this. So that's what we're going to do. There's my new resin. We're just going to add those couple of drops to these and fix these so that they are as close to perfect as they can be. Oh, that's a better... Okay, <clears throat> so this is the back of this one, 
nice and smooth and finished. This had a little dent in it, so we've fixed that. This, I didn't see while I was filming these, but decided this needed a little more resin on that to level that off, so that's nice and smooth. And then this was the one with the hole in it. So I tape the sides. So let's pull the tape off, see what we're working with. Okay, that's what we have. Let me do, okay, so the hole has been completely filled in and what I have now is just a little, ooh, good. What I have now is just a little raised area right there. Let me see, can you see it? That little raised area on either side, I'm just gonna sand that down with the Dremel and we'll be done. My cuticle cutters. that and then I'm going to take my gloss varnish I just need a little drop that I sand it because once you sand it it actually turns sort of white and this way you don't even notice that it was sanded alrighty we're done <laughs>